want to look at uh, B SRT B8. Uh, this deals with more word problems. These ones that we're looking at here on worksheet four are a little more complex. Um, and I would always say complex because maybe you have to do one or two trig problems to get the solution. There are a couple at the end that are a little more interesting. We'll see how you do with those. And I'll give you an example under the Elmo how to do them. But I want to just talk about the classic problem that's used here is something to do with um, using two trig measurements to find a single measurement. So here's a person standing out on the playground looking up at the school maybe and the flag that's flying on the school and uh, we need to calculate the height of the flag. Now the way it's done is, and I'll do it in particular uh, under the Elmo, but let me just talk some strategy with you. This person's looking at two different angles, a smaller one and then a bigger one. But they still form just two right triangles. Can you see them? The, the big right triangle to the very top of the flag and a smaller right triangle to the top of the building. All you and I need to do is calculate the entire height from the very top to the very bottom, which is one side of the big triangle so we could use trig to do that and then we would use the smaller angle and the smaller triangle to find y's value which would be up to the height of the building and I already know you know what to do here to figure this out to get the height of the flag would be the x measurement minus my y measurement would be my flag height and they all kind of work like this where you usually set up two relationships, find it, and you either add them together or subtract them to uh, find the difference. Um, just maybe quickly, one, one other case kind of in a similar light is the classic two building problems. You've got, uh, you got a tall building and then you've got a short building. Somebody's standing on this building and they talk about um, looking up at an angle of elevation, looking up at some angle, looking down at some other angle and again can you see the two triangles this one down here this one up here and usually they're asking for say the height of this building over here and you can see what to do you're going to take that height and you're going to add it to this height to get the entire height of the building let's look at a couple of problems and you'll see what I'm talking about man I love these problems um, these are the classics, and so uh, you can just expect them to be on your quiz or anything you're working on. Flagpoles have been calculated since the beginning of time using these techniques. But here's the idea of a problem like this. Uh, why these are a little step up is because they usually involve two trig relationships to solve it, not that they're greatly more difficult. First of all, there's a flagpole sitting on the top of a building. 300 feet away is the person. They look up at the base at 30 degrees, so 30 degrees is this part here, and the 32 is the bigger angle. The idea is we're going to solve for the entire uh, side here, and let's say that's x. And then we're going to use the smaller triangle, this one, to solve for y, and we're going to by doing that, we can get this fairly easy using trig and same with this. And then we're going to subtract. We're going to take x, the full distance, and subtract the y. And we get what's left in the flagpole. Not too bad, actually. So let's do the big x side here. That would be the tangent of 32 is the opposite x over the adjacent 300. And then the other setup would be the tangent of the smaller angle, 30, would be its opposite, y, over its 300. So what I'll do now is I'll do the quick calculation. Remember, when this is in the numerator, we just multiply these together. So the tangent of 32 times 300 is 187.46. And I'm going to subtract the tangent of 30 times 300 which is 173.21 and then we're going to subtract the two items and we find out that the flagpole is 14.25 and they ask us for the nearest foot so a 14 
foot flagpole is what we're looking at. Nice little problem there. This is uh, a, the same situation. I'll set it up but not solve it just for time. Uh, actually, the numbers are almost too similar. But now we're uh, looking at the boat. Um, let's see, it says a boat looking up at the lighthouse at 18 and 21. This is almost identical to the last, but let's set it up. Again, the idea is to solve for the entire value. We'll call that x. And then the smaller, we'll call that y. And again, this is another tangent scenario. So the tangent of 21 is x over 300. And then the tangent of 18 is y over 300. And again, I just subtract those two values to get the total height of our lighthouse. Now the last one is uh, much more complex than simply just solving two things. And uh, I am going to do it, and I'm going to go quickly. Uh, for those of you that want to uh, see it, uh, it takes a little bit of time. Partly what happens here is there's a little bit of missing information, but we both, from both sides, this person sees the height of the tree at 42, this one sees it at 36, and we want the height. Uh, so I'm going to call that H, and I'm just going to set up two relationships. This would be, um, I'm going to call this X, the, the distance from here to the tree from, from our friend Sally. And over here is 40 minus X. That's a very important part of being able to solve this, is that this is whatever's left over the 40. We don't know that this is in the middle. It might even tell us it's not the middle, but that's okay. So tangent of 42 is H over uh, x. And then over here, tangent of 36 is h over 40 minus x. Now I'm going to cross multiply uh, both of these and I get h equals the tangent of 42 times x and I get h equals the tangent of 36 times 40 minus x. Seems th Things seem to be too complex here, too many variables, but notice they both equal h so they equal each other. The tangent of 42x equals the tangent of 36 times 40 uh, minus the tangent of 36 times x. All I did is distribute this number here. Now, notice I have x's here and x's here. I'm going to gather them. In a minute, I'm going to turn these all to decimals so you can see it. But for now, I just think it's just as easy not to. So I'm going to bring this over, which will become positive. The tangent of 36 times x equals the tangent of 36 times 40. And I think I'm ready to turn all these into decimals uh, for you. I personally don't do it that way, but the tangent of 42 is 0.900x, and the tangent of 36 is 0.727x and the tangent of 36 times 40 is 29.06 and so these are both things that have x in them so I can add them together 0.727 and then I get 1.627x equals 29.06 and now I can divide 29.06 divided by 1.627, and I get x equaling 17.86. So this value x is 17.86, and now I can solve for h, the height. This is what they wanted all along was the height. By knowing x, I can go back to the original equation, which says the tangent of 42 is h over that distance x, which is 17.86. And now, again, I can just multiply those values. So I multiply that times the tangent of 42, and I get my height to be 16.08. And they wanted it to the nearest foot. So our answer would be it's a 16-foot tall tree. This is a great problem. It's a little system of equations, a nice blast from the old Algebra 1 stuff, and a good context for trigonometry. I went fast, but you can go back and watch it. Thanks, guys.